your opinion topic. later on on this. Yes. Yeah, I'm curious to hear what's that Marilyn's top take on, yeah, on so, it. Yeah, so am I because, you know, she's been married three times. Yes, and so and it's a good way to gauge, actually, <laughs> she's what a good, went she's wrong, three, what she's went right. Right. <laughs> right. Three times. There yeah, you go. Three times. Yes. Okay. So we got this email and uh, we thought this would actually be a great thing to talk about in a segment. Mm -hmm. So the email is uh, about a couple who were dating online for about a year, which is a long time, really connected, had not physically met. Finally, they meet. But on one side of it, uh, there's no physical oomph. There's no chemistry happening. Now, the guy was really disappointed he wasn't physically attracted to her. They did sleep together, but he didn't have an attraction. So a month later, he broke up with her, and now he's thinking, oh, no. This woman was actually really good in every other way right. except for the physical attraction. Can this develop over time? Should I go back? What's going on? So the question is... Yeah. Can physical attraction develop over time, or is it necessary to have it right off the top right. if you're trying to grow a romantic relationship? So can we do a quick little poll with the audience? Let's. Okay, so do you think it can grow over time? Put your hand up. Okay. And we have examples in the audience okay. of people who, where it has All grown right. over time. Some guys are like putting their heads down. They're like, do not look at me. Okay, put your hands up if you think it, it is not possible. You have to have physical attraction right off the, the, the bat. If you think that, okay. put up your hand. So what do you think? Maybe 60-40? What's your guess? What are, what's your guess? That's I'd about 60-40. I think about 60-40. So 60% of people say yes, it can. 40% actually say no. Yeah. What's your take on it? And then I'll tell you my take. I think you need to have it off the top. And yeah. I'm not talking about crazy, lustful, oh want to rip off your clothes God. kind of <laughs> hanging that from kind. a chandelier. Oh my goodness gracious, I'm, I'm having a picture. So I'm not talking okay. about that. <laughs> okay. But I'm saying I've never been in a situation where there was no spark, no oomph, no thing, and I was actually willing to go to the next level with this person because right. If, if it's not there, um, I, I don't, I, I've never had a relationship develop right. where it doesn't exist at all. Right. You can have somebody who's totally perfect on paper, mm -hmm. but if there isn't that special spark, that special something, mm -hmm. then what do you have? You have a roommate. You're sitting there in flannel pajamas mm -hmm. eating popcorn in mm -hmm. bed together, like mm -hmm. hanging out, watching fun right. chick flicks. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, there needs to be something physical, right. I think. And yeah. I feel like in my situations, there's so always been the right off the bat. I'm at the, I'm You're the 40%. You're at the 40%. So I'm going to sure. join the 60% crowd. Yeah. And my take is absolutely it can grow. It can grow. It Even can grow. if there's nothing. Thing, no stirring anywhere. So here's what, well, here, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think, let, let me just kind of like expand the, the conversation. Okay, so okay. the first thing is, do I think it can grow? Yes. However, there has to be multiple things in place for that part to actually to grow. So okay. we've talked about this on the show before, that my philosophy around relationships and attraction is that we have our head and our heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so our head are the things that we, things that we really value, the things that we love, things that we appreciate. These are the qualities of the person that I'm actually looking for, right. right? And those are the things that, you know, it's kind of like the checklist a little bit, right? Yeah. These are the things that our parents kind of want for us and what we, what we want for ourselves. And the heart is kind of like it's on and it's off. I'm attracted, I want to rip off his clothes, or I don't, right? So, right. Um, so it's kind of like we've kind of got these two different ledgers. And what I have found is the most successful relationships are really with when both of them are kind of going like this. Yeah, right? but you need both. But you need both. But here's part of the challenge in our culture is that we are now uh, being told on a multiple different levels that if we don't have that kind of I'm so attracted that there's something wrong. Okay, exactly mm -hmm. with what this guy says, right? Mm -hmm. So she's got all these amazing qualities, but I don't have that. So my, my advice to him is that take it slow. Okay. Oh, give yourself some time. This has been an, uh, this has been a long distance relationship yeah. for a year. There's been a lot of things that on the, the a lot of things he is attracted to her. Um, in terms of things that they've, in terms of their correspondence, there seems to be a really beautiful friendship. So I would say, give it time. Mm -hmm. Give it time in terms of physical attraction. And a lot of times it actually will catch up. And you think that it can grow. Okay, it can this grow. is interesting. Yes, so this is, but, but uh, that being said, I want to be really clear. It, it, the head part has to be very, very specific. So I want someone who is loyal, respectful. I want a friend. I want to feel someone who really cares for me. Right. Right? I want someone who is going to take good care of me. I want to nurture. I want, so you can be very specific with your head. Right? And so as long as you've got a really amazing qualities that you're actually looking for, and you really like them, you respect them, um, that a lot of times the heart will actually catch up. And what is, but I mean, it's iffy though. Sometimes the heart might not catch up, right? Well, you I know mean, what? The, the heart is not actually the organ I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just wondering. 
wondering yeah, if yeah, someone yeah, yeah. can just, I mean, what if things just develop into yeah. a very platonic... So what I would say is I would not want someone to get married before the heart does catch up. Okay, good. That's okay, so enough. that was, so I don't want somebody just taking my advice going, okay, Dr. Karen said I got, I've got the checklist, all right, let's go down the aisle, and then I get like, so, no, 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 I want us to like, make sure just wait, like, just be patient, okay. be patient. And let's actually compare this to arranged marriages, which is, I think is very interesting. So Dr. Uh, Epstein, he is a researcher in Harvard. He yeah. studied between Western and, and Eastern and arranged marriages, okay, just kind of comparing it. Part of the problem with our Western culture is everything is about, I gotta feel love, I gotta feel that passion, mm -hmm. if I don't feel it, then I'm out of here, right? Mm -hmm. And so what he's done is he's kind of compared it with arranged marriages. And I remember hearing this and studying this years ago when I was doing my undergrad in psychology, that arranged marriages have a high, they, you know when they actually hit their honeymoon period yeah. is around the five to 10 year mark. Ah. And they're actually saying that some arranged marriages are much more successful than our Western cultures because with arranged marriages, it's been very calculated. There's certain things like parents are choosing based on the uh, same family values, same uh, religion a lot of times mm -hmm. in terms of like there, there's this very strong compatibility. Mm -hmm. um, and I think about if I was to allow my parents to choose my partner, I think they would have done a very good job. I would be horrified. Would, would, okay. All yeah. right. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. so it does depend on your parents. It does depend on your parents. But all that to say that compare that to uh, uh, to our Western relationships and a lot of times they're plummeting at about a year and a half right so we're kind of going the this opposite way so I think we have to change our mindset a little bit around what attraction as long as you've got that really really solid quality base yeah. then the heart well I find a lot of times catch up well so many people weighed in on this so I want to make sure that later in the show we can okay. jump in again and maybe get some more tips from okay. uh, the rest of our guest experts as well okay. I think there has to be a happy medium yeah, there does you, right? you do want to make sure that the head, heart does catch up yeah yeah. Okay. okay. So very, very important. Uh, you know yeah. what? I'm just going to mention a couple of them okay, from sure. Facebook because holy moly, did you respond to this one as well as everyone upstairs at City Line? Mm -hmm. So, April, there definitely has to be physical attraction when you first meet someone in hopes of having a romantic relationship. Rachel, I knew my husband for two years before we dated. I really liked him as a friend, but if you told me we were going to get married and have kids, I wouldn't have believed you. Mm -hmm. uh, Sue, immediate. Tanisha, it's definitely something that can develop over time. Pat needs to be there right from the start, and 31 years later, I still get butterflies when he comes home in the driveway every day. So cute. Annette, immediate. And the first kiss is the killer. I agree. <laughs> Karen Clark, immediate. Sandra, yes, immediate physical attraction. Very necessary. So it's interesting. I, you know, for me, the attraction is a physical attraction, but it's an attraction to the brain. I know, Sue. I think your attraction is much more that. I think you're, you and I are actually much more aligned. Than, you think so? Yeah. Because when you're talking about it, it's, yeah. it's you're so attracted to all of those qualities about him. For sure. Right? And that's more the head part. Yeah. But then why did I first start talking to him, though? Yeah. I couldn't see his brain from across the room. Right. right. <laughs> but you sensed it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you sensed it. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah. First on the checklist, <laughs> something physical. Next, oh my God, he's got a brain. He's a thinker. He wants yeah. to change the world. He's brilliant. Oh yeah, my God, yeah, yeah. now I'm really invested. Right. And so would you say you're more attracted now after being married? Oh, oh boy, that's a, such a uh, loaded question. Sorry, that's Tracy. That's a hard I question. I, can't, I shouldn't put people on the I phone like I think that this. I'm in love in, in, in a bigger in, way in, than I ever right. was from the beginning because right. now I've seen him as a father. So this is exactly my point. This yeah. is, so your attraction has grown Right? Because That's you've true. got this such a solid but it started sentence. with something. Yeah. <laughs> even that first day, even he was so arrogant, yeah. and I was still like, you know what? Uh, there's something I'm giving here. him another chance. There's something here. Yeah. There's something here. <laughs> Things are stirring.